Next one is called Crunchyroll gave copyright notices to artists at Anime Expo, which is a convention for anime enjoyers. But Crunchyroll was out there being like, you can't. Oh, oh, okay, let's check it out. Employees of Viz Media were going around Anime Expo handing... Viz Media were okay. Copyright infringement letters? Okay. ...out copyright infringement letters. And that was kind of a thing that thing that was going around on Twitter. So if you guys have never been to a con or if you guys have never been to Anime Expo, there are booths. I've never been to Anime Expo and I will never go to an Anime Expo. If I wasn't doing content creation, I would still not go because I do not want to smell smelly ass, disgusting fucking neckbeards that live in their mom's basement. Absolutely not. I'm going to stay at home. And now that I'm doing content creation, I can never show my face in a public meeting like this in fear of getting stabbed. Booths in which people can go and sell merch, stuff like that. There's also something called an artist alley, which is a room. It's not okay. even a room. It is a freaking massive where all artist tables are there. Go around and the artists will have their little booths to go sell their art. You have cool. to apply to get in. You can basically sell whatever you want. And in these conventions, a lot of times what is sold is fan art of known IPs. There will be, I don't know, My Hero Academia fan art, Chainsaw mm. Man fan art, etc. So this started with this tweet that I saw on Twitter from Kazozia, if I read their name right, or Kozia for artists who are selling a fan art at Anime Expo. Please be aware, representatives for Viz Media are going around giving out copyright strike violations. I'm but like, how? Like, when I think copyright strike violations, I'm thinking, oh shit, YouTube, I got a copyright strike. I need to counter appeal it and now wait ten business days to resolve it. But this is an IRL copyright strike. How does this work? I'm not sure if it's exhibitor hall only at the moment, but I am aware there are a lot of small artists up here who aren't AA. I think this is referring to Artist Alley. Evangelion Dragon made Lucky Star fall under some of their properties that they're giving out strikes for. What does the strike mean know, though? Viz Media is a publisher group that published a lot of massive titles, such as Bleach, Inu, Yasha, Sailor yeah. Moon, Naruto, all of that is under Viz Media. And then with a follow-up tweet from KYOZM, they stated Holy I was in a hurry to warn other artists when I made this tweet, so maybe copyright strike isn't the perfect word to use here. But here's a crop photo of the paper they handed out my booth. It has come to our attention that if you're offering to sell merchandise in a manner that appears to infringe upon the copyright and or trademark okay. of Viz Media LLC or Crunchyroll LLC, aka the rights holder, this activity will be reported to Anime Expo staff per their request. Failure to cease this activity may result in your expulsion from the expo. That's it? That, like, you just get kicked out of the expo? Oh, wait, this is fucking crazy. Because, like, first of all, copyright infringement. Well... You are using their IP for sure, but this is like fan art or merch. And yes, there is the IP that you're sourcing it from, but you're not selling like a screenshot of the anime plastered into a merch on a t-shirt, right? Even then I call that transformative. These are like individual artists and content creators that are drawing or creating different things based on the anime IP and trying to make some money off of it. But Viz Media is saying, no, nah, you cannot do that. You need to stop or you're going to get kicked out expulsion from the expo. Is there any other thing that could happen? Here is a list of merchandise with infringing names. So as you can see, Attack on Titan, Black Butler, Black Clover, Bleach, Chainsaw Man. They have Haikyuu, Fruits Baskets, Naruto, Tokyo Gold, Tower of God, you know, the whole shebang and other that is such a, and, and it, this is like so specific to Japanese companies, man. This is because like, I don't see Western companies doing this shit. Let me give you an example with like video games or different shows, right? Western companies, even Crunchyroll gives people like Giga a fucking sponsorship to do a full Mushoku Tensei watch through, a full different anime. Kaiju A was a new sponsor that I've seen on Twitch, right? Where they know that through influencer marketing, and because their audience is much more focused into that target group, you're able to, you know, advertise your products through these sponsorships, right? And this helps the bottom line grow for everybody involved in it, right? And with these artists making this kind of fan, you know, fan content and merch, yes, the artists are profiting from it through their work that they provided and the value that I've created through the merch. This also will help advertise the anime in question and help the sales regarding that. I don't think people buying merch here is taking away potential money that Viz Media is losing out for. But some reason, Japanese companies are so stuck in dinosaur age rules where they will go out and strike shit like this. They will go out and strike anime reaction channels too. And say what you will about reaction content, whether or not it's transformative, whether or not it's ethical. I don't give a fuck. But what I do know is companies literally make influencers 
market their products because they know that they can make more money off of it. Video games gives early access to certain content creators so that they can heavily advertise their content. Do you really think someone watching someone play a game is going to hinder them from buying the game? I'd argue it's the opposite. It's only going to advertise their product and make people buy that even more. And reaction, same concept. But boomer companies will go out of their way and literally strike people now i have had some nice experiences recently with some other smaller japanese companies that's run by more younger people and they understand the power of youtube and and anime reactions and one people one person one group actually requested that i react to raising children isekai for a market rate because they understand that yeah if people start talking about this anime if influencers cover this shit then more people are going to have more eyes on it and willing to you know potentially buy the dvd sales but for whatever reason these dinosaur boomer ass japanese companies they just don't want free advertisement they are more i don't think it's and my thinking if if it's not just following old rules it might be just like a principle thing where it's like i don't give a fuck how much free advertisement you guys do for us we just don't like you making any sort of money through the IP that we own. Even if you making money means that we can make more money. Maybe it's something like that. ...ones like Lucky Star and Dragon Maid. And the type of merchandise they mark down as well, like jewelry, trinkets or lanyards, and wallets, keychains, or phone cases. That was happening in Anime Expo. And then basically with this, there are two sides. So there's a group of people that think, hey, it is pretty fucked up that these big companies like Viz Media is going around and trying to encroach on small artists, just trying to make a living. And the other group of people, their mm. thought process is, well, this is the law and without proper... Shut the fuck up, dumbass. This is the law is the dumbest fucking statement because, like, who made those law, right? Law, <laughs> rules aren't made to be broken, but laws exist for, for a reason. But, like, these copyright laws are so, so old. So to give, like, this dinosaur take on this dinosaur set of rules that was created a long time ago that has so many different models. Even fair use doesn't even exist in Japan, but it looks in Western America. Like, this is such a weak argument to be like, no, it's just the rules you're, and you're not abiding by it. I hate it when motherfuckers just, like, glaze the corporations and side with them and, and, and sake of being a devil's advocate or something. For authorizations, selling art and, like, products of somebody's IP is technically illegal. So I'm just curious as to what you guys think about this. So, reaction content is different from uh, what, you know, artists are doing. Because, like, my defense for reaction content is that we don't upload the full footage. It is edited and it serves as commentary. The source material is not a same experience as my reaction because I provide commentary and reaction throughout the whole thing. And because of that, it's protected under fair use and transformative content. Now, if can you apply that into fan merch? People, let's say there's Attack on Titan merch, right? And then you drew Eren or something and you sold that. Does that count as being transformative? Because like clearly it's, it's a bit different, right? But I found people from both sides. And again, if you don't agree with anybody's statement, don't send hate to them. That's never the thing that we try to do here. Sorry, I'm like losing my voice. So we have Koma Juice stating, I will never understand big media brands trying to strike down artists for this. Like it's mutually beneficial. Yep. Fans want more merch. Fans keep interacting with and showing off the media. Yep. Artists get to make merch and money. Yep. And the media companies essentially get free advertising. It's literally free fucking money for everybody involved. But Japanese companies hate free money in advertisements. I don't know. And we have somebody like Gab stating, and it's essentially annoying because these artists are not making even close to enough money to threaten the profits of big media brands. Coma Juice follows up with stating, they could never even threaten profits of big media brands since they do not usually sell the products artists do. If they did, fans would be buying them. I'm a Splatoon fan. I will buy Splatoon merch whenever I can, but I can't because they don't sell it here. And we have Furry mm. Q stating, in my opinion, Crunchyroll is such a hypocrite and is just doing it for profit. They forgot they were once yep. a bootleg anime slash drama. They started as a pirated anime site. Drama streaming company that used fan subs in the OG days. It would make sense for recent titles that they have merch, but some titles, there's literally none. I'm just saying personally, I'm a big Sanrio girly. I love Pom Pom Purin, and I buy Pom Pom Purin things whenever I can see it. So even when it's a small artist or some uh, Sanrio themselves selling licensed product, I basically will buy it. But sometimes Sanrio doesn't make the cute Pom Pom Purin shirts. Of course, I want a keychain of Pom Pom Purin with a chainsaw. So I will buy it from the small artist because I want that. And Sanrio is not going to make Pom Pom Prime with a chainsaw. The for sure, I understand that like, you know, there is like this demand for different types of merch, but the literal IP holders are not creating that merch, but these other small creators are. And by buying that merch, 
it satisfy the customers. They're willing to flex and, you know, I don't know, share it online and, you know, have other people get their eyes on it. Eventually that goes from the eyes in the merch to the eyes of the IP into maybe, you know, people buying more shit related to the IP. But at the end of the day, I guess, because the laws specifically say that you just can't fucking, you know, use existing IPs and sell creative content like that through merch. It's, it's, that, that's the focal point here, right? I... They should make a knockoff, right? If it's like a pom pom merch, fucking call it Pim Pim. You know, instead of Nike, you just put a fucking C in it. Instead of Eren Jaeger, it's Ye Eren Jaeger. I don't know. <laughs> the other side of the coin, people are basically stating, hey, I mean, at the end of the day, what you're doing technically is illegal. So from a moral standpoint, do these companies morally, should they pursue small artists for selling stuff? Maybe not. But legally, can they? Yes, yes they can. Yes. So we Morally? I think it's such a dumb thing to do to go after small creators like this because again the the craziest thing is it's not it's not about the money it's about the principle that they're worried about because the profits that these small creators are making is insignificant but you've seen other japanese companies like nintendo for example nintendo is such a villain where any sort of you know like for example i come from a community called super smash brothers melee it's a fighting game for the nintendo gamecube and you might think that wow people still play melee there's a huge there's a huge competitive scene and nintendo has gotten out of their way to ban tournaments on top of that because it's like nope this is not the way that we want our product to be displayed and they've done other heinous shit on youtube side as well striking people making any sort of mods on you know pokemon or any other nintendo content that's why i stay away the fuck from nintendo and it's not because these other people are making profits that Nintendo is, making, is missing out on. It's just simply the principle of it that's rooted from the outdated laws of copyright that they have. And that shit is just never gonna fucking change, man. We have this tweet from Fuafi. I hope I'm reading their name right. I love their art. I follow them. Their art is gorgeous, by the way. And I think they were at Anime Expo this year. I don't remember, actually. Not defending these companies, but fan artists need to realize this happens every year and not to expect to be treated like Japan. Hmm. Companies essentially sell the licenses for official goods, and you making fan merch is considered a loss of profit for them. That's all you are. That is a very cutthroat take but what she's saying is true right we are not japan laws are different there fan artists have always operated in a gray zone and when you step on companies toes especially in exhibit halls in a big event like anime expo you'll have to learn when to step off again it's dumb but it is what it is it is dumb but you know it is what it is that is the legal fucking parameters that we've got to work with in america if the companies don't pursue an infringement case within x amount of years after learning about the case they lose their right to after those years they usually leave artist alley alone but reps will often walk around expo halls so i just wow aware. things you can do as an artist keep an ear out for which companies are issuing warnings that year in expo halls move towards your own original ips or ones that welcome fan merch avoid directly naming slash logo <laughs> slash labels to avoid potential confusion with licensed merch and again right instead of naruto it could be called oturan you know just naruto backwards different ways this is actually so interesting to know that there's other people that's, you know, in this anime adjacent space where I do anime reactions and there's a whole shit, you know, problems with copyright strikes and I'm very familiar with it. But I didn't realize that other creators exist creating fan merch and they also have a totally separate, you know, set of problems due to the IP and copyright as well. Fuwa added a quote retweet from another creator called Tumin. They stated, of course, I'm sure everyone gets frustrated, but it's mostly due to the shift in understanding. People hyping up the fan base from a passion is good, but it's not fair for the people who properly license the titles to do business business and are required to go through all the hoops. Brother Ming basically follows up with the exhibitor hall for pretty much every convention I've been to has been very clear that fan art is not allowed. If really? you venture outside of allowed IPs like Hoyoverse games, you can't be surprised with the IP reps actually flagging you. And Fuwa says, yup, exactly. They're not trying to make things harder for us. One con I went to this year even allowed fan art this year after a certain distributor is no longer around to hand out takedowns. I'm being vague because they vaguely told me in email fan art is okay this year. I do very want gray to area. clarify this as well. So in Anime Expo, there were three halls. There was the entertainment Entertainment hall, which is basically only companies that were there. It was like Hulu, Sanrio was there, a bunch of other big titles. And then there okay. was the exhibit hall for exhibitors, which was in a different building. And then beneath that hall was the artist alley. There was a false notion I floating around baby. that these copyright infringement papers were being handed out in the artist alley. The artist alley, from what I know, was untouched by this copyright infringement handout. It was only in the exhibitor hall that it was huh. being handed out in. That's so interesting. How, like, they have three separate fucking buildings, three separate categories where it just, like, has, like, a descending order of how legitimate it is. 
You have existing actual fucking brands like Hulu, Sanrio, whatever. Then you have what's called an exhibition alley, then artist alley. And artist alley sounds like the most like shady part where every, not, not shady, but you know, it's going to be a lot of that from fan merch and stuff like that. Less, you know, not established a little bit on like a, like a black market, right? <laughs> they go to the alley and do all that shit, but the exhibit's not touched, huh? Like Brother Ming said, typically fan art is not allowed whatsoever in the exhibitor hall unless it is an approved IP like Hoyoverse. In terms that is so interesting. So Expo, because like it's in the Expo's best interest to, because like Anime Expo, like I bet they don't give a fuck about whether or not small creators, well, they, they're not really picking a side, but it's in their best interest to have as many people attend. So in order to like do that, they create three separate groups where they send all the quote unquote problematic or gray area, you know, artists that's working with these, you know, not knockoff, but using their IPs to create those merch. They put them all in the alley because it's, it's the ghetto. It's like the underground black market. And Axpo is like, you know what? You guys are free to come here and you can do whatever you want here. Just exhibition alley. You're not allowed. That's legitimate grounds. You know, the first two buildings, they're allowed. But the third building, you know what? Wild West, do whatever the fuck you want there, but understand the risks. In terms of licensing, what it is, if you want to sell IP and you want to make a profit, sell somebody's IP, as in, for instance, if you want to sell, I don't know, let's just use Chainsaw Man because that okay. was on the list. If you want to sell Chainsaw Man products, then you need to contact Viz Media and get a licensing right to make that product. It can cost you a couple thousand to Damn. get the rights to the IP to then sell it. But once you acquire that, then you can legally sell forever stuff like that. If you don't acquire the IP, then essentially you are illegally selling it so yeah. that's what this is in reference to in terms of where i personally stand do i think it's fair that small artists are getting slapped on the wrist with of course not this is the least thing from fair but now that i've understand a little bit more of the law surrounding it and i guess the biggest argument here is it's not fair for the people that bought the license that paid us such a huge upfront cost of money. And even after that, I wonder if there's any royalties that you have to pay to Viz Media after getting the license, after you sell that merch. Maybe some percentage has to go back. And maybe it's like an, maybe the license also expires and you got to fucking, you know, just keep re renewing it. In that aspect, I guess it's a bit unfair for the people that bought the license where the small creators are just kind of getting away without it, right? But you could also take a step back and ask yourself, like, why does this licensing system even need to exist? Well, to protect the IPs, this is a pretty complex topic. It's not so easy as me just saying, oh, my content transformative and you motherfuckers are being greedy and we could all be profiting if you just understood the power of influencer marketing and advertising, but you just don't understand. But this is different from anime reactions. And I'm not too sure now, because like licensing needs to exist to protect the IP, right? What happens if there is no licensing involved and everybody can just copy Chainsaw Man and do their shit? Then it just kind of turns into chaos, huh? I'm not sure. I'm not sure anymore. With these copyright infringement papers telling them to stop selling the IP. Morally, I don't really think it's fair. These are like small artists at the end of the day. Most of I these, agree. there were some big exhibitor tables that were also selling like stolen IP. So stolen, right? Because using legal terms. But at the end of the day, borrowed ip okay. morally do i think it's a big deal no these companies Crunchyroll, makes way too much money for yep. it to matter but legally can they pursue it and the answer is yes and i think at the end of the day if you're doing something that morally everybody does agree is okay but mm. legally is not, not allowed. allowed you can't be upset for getting in trouble for doing something that is illegal that you knew yeah and that's the thing about anime reactions on youtube as well right because like before I started doing this, I was very aware of the risks involved. I was like, I've seen plenty of channels get deleted, terminated for, you know, getting caught with copyright strikes. And there are ways to mitigate that. And I, I, I know much better now how to do that. But from the beginning, I knew that what I was playing with was fire. So when the strikes inevitably happen, and they will happen, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, right? I understood those risks, but I still went on with it. So, you know, it's just like... You should be aware of what you're signing up for. Everything here isn't morally fair. Fuck no. This, this is not hurting the bottom line for anybody. In fact, I'd argue that the IP holders are losing out money by pursuing these small creators like this. But in a legal way, it's just like, that's the fucking rules. And it sucks. And it's not much you can really do about it. So 
you should know what you're signing up for and you know prepare for that it was illegal that's like me okay if i were driving around in california with my car and i put illegal tints on my car as in california it's like 70 percent in the front anything goes in the back i believe if i drive around knowingly with illegal tints on my car i can't be upset if i got pulled over for my illegal tints because it's illegal do i think mm. having tints below 70 percent on the front windshield is a big deal no as no. long as it's not like pitch black like you can't see out of your car that's probably a safety hazard but below if you if you have like i don't know 50 percent tints on the front window I don't think it matters to me. But again, I can't be upset that I got ticketed for doing something that I know was illegal. I have no tints on my car, by the way. That's just something I threw out, right? If you went into, I don't know, Walmart and you stole a bunch of candy bars, like you stole a Twix bar and Walmart decided to like arrest you for it. Is it fair that you got arrested for stealing no. a candy bar? The bar is worth like a dollar. But no, of course not. But, you know, you knew the risks involved with it. So it's like... Know what you're getting involved with and don't fucking complain about it because it happened, right? You fully knew what the risks were associated with either creating merch, you know, for existing IPs or even doing anime reactions on YouTube. The fuck are you getting mad about? You knew exactly what was going to happen. Now, I would like the rules and the parameters and the laws surrounding it to be more adaptable to kind of be more modern so everyone can benefit from the fucking money. But is that going to happen? Probably not. So what's in your best interest? What can you do as an individual? Just be aware of the risks associated with it. And don't fucking cry when shit happens, when the inevitable happens, because, you know, that's just part of the game. It sucks, but it is what it is. The loss of profit of like 50 cents for Walmart is really nothing at the end of the day. But again, you can't be upset that you got arrested for stealing a candy bar from Walmart because stealing is illegal. That's just my personal take, at least. So now same she's thing right. with this. Is the law fair is a different argument. And that's- Fuck no, the law sucks! Something we can debate too. I definitely see the argument, you know? Like a lot of these titles has a fan base that wants to purchase merch, but mm. the IP holder isn't making merch of that title. And the fans want something and the IP holder isn't making so of course there's gonna people that come in and fill the gap and make merch yep. but if you didn't purchase the rights to then do it you may get in trouble for it so i don't really think it's fair but i think you can't really be upset unless you went down the legal route there is like a legal route to go about it which is purchasing a license but that's so fucked like i understand that the legal route exists but what did you say the upfront cost of 2 to 3k you think a small creator doing this for a passion or a hobby it's going to be able to fork up 2 to 3k. And then what's the royalty fees? What's the annual subscription of renewing the license, right? Yes, I understand that a different method exists. But like to say just buy a license to small creators that are trying to fill in a demand that's purely born through passion. It's just, it just seems all backwards, does it not? sense and if you didn't do that then it is what it is and again at the end of the day, they weren't the IP holder Viz Media wasn't going into Artist Alley to target the small artist. Hey, retard, rule number one, never fucking ask what we've already watched. Number, rule number two, anyone else that fucking answers that idiot gets banned. Motherfucker, do you not see me watching a fucking video and reacting to it? And you decided that you'd be the good fucking idea to not only break rule number one, but then to immediately just disrupt the video experience by tagging me on that shit? Get the fuck out of your dumbass. Take a week off in artist alley that were selling like little pins and whatever they were in the exhibitor hall which is like pretty much explicitly like hey no fan art allowed in the exhibitor hall i think in this case it is pretty fair for viz media to go and kind of like slap them on the wrist for it if they were to go down to artist alley though then my opinion might change because so hold up hold up hold up remember there is the exhibition alley and then there is the Artist Alley. Artist Alley is basically black market that the expo has created to make sure that shit can still happen, but they're just turning a blind on it. But the people that actually got slapped by Viz Media were in the middle, the exhibition alley. So this, so I, yeah. So people in the exhibition got fucked, but the, uh, the art alley didn't. So that's a nice kind of compromise from Viz Media. This is a plot twist suddenly, right? Is this not a plot twist where it's like, hold up. People said you can't sell, you know, shit in the exhibition alley if you don't have full license, but some people pursued it and Viz Media fucked them up for it. I guess there's a bigger incentive to do it in the exhibition alley, sorry, exhibition building or exhibition, the second building, exhibition place, because there might be more eyes and interest there. And that's why some people, despite knowing the rules, went to sell their stuff there compared to the art alley. And art alley maybe not have that much traffic. I'm not totally sure, but at the very least, right? I don't want to fucking glaze the corporations, but if the facts right now state that they said, don't do this shit at exhibition, you can be fine in our alley. And Viz Media didn't touch our alley. That's, that's, that's kind of reasonable, I guess. Now you're really preying on the small fish. It really doesn't matter. That's pretty much it. Completely 
I don't know. This is a topic. Anything regarding copyright, I am so interested in. Guys, this is a channel called Catliente. Please go give them a like and sub to their channel if you enjoy their videos. But pretty informative in just seeing like other content creators that are doing like anime adjacent stuff and getting into copyright problems. I thought it was only reaction content on YouTube that's, you know, facing those struggles. But damn, IRL copyright strikes, bro. Could you fucking imagine in your real life copyright strikes is such a funny concept. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's as simple as you understand the risks involved with whatever you're doing and you went in there fully aware of the risks. So when the inevitable happens, you shouldn't be mad. You should be very aware and think about how to mitigate that risk, right? Now, should the laws change? Absolutely. These are outdated copyright laws. That's just the plague of the world. And for whatever reason, Japanese companies just love shooting themselves in the feet. But maybe at the end of the day, it's not even about the money because these companies are not, they're not suffering their bottom line because small creators are doing this. It may be as simple as they're just following dinosaur rules because warrior samurai honor, man. It's about the principle, not the money. That's it for me.